excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. Father, into your hands, I command my spirit! And fuck you, we're doing Passion of the Christ, you fucks. Look upon our 100th episode. And despair. Wait, um, so we're doing Passion of the Christ and you decide to quote Ozymandias? <laughs> yeah, man, what? it's about the same same vein, right? It's in the same world. Anyway. It, is it? It's our 100th episode. <laughs> thank you for tuning in, everyone. Uh, like I said, uh, this is our 100th episode, so thank you for tuning in. If this is your first foray into the Silver Linings playlist, welcome. Uh, you've picked one hell of an episode to tune in for. Um, yeah, if, if this is your first time listening, why did you pick this up? Ep- Actually, you know what? Uh, I get it. Never mind. We have a huge uh, evangelical uh, fan base, if you didn't know. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, uh, we don't. They would so, not listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a podcast where we like to watch movies. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. This is a movie where we choose to watch movies like The Passion of the Christ. We this don't necessarily a, like doing it. This is a movie where we like to watch movies. Yeah, that's oh, what did you I said. Say that? This yeah, is a yeah, podcast yeah. where we choose to watch movies that we don't necessarily like sometimes, but it's movies that don't end in your normal Hollywood fashion of a happily ever after, of a nice shiny bow on the end of things. And we like to find the silver lining in those endings, hence the title, something good and positive to gleam by the time the credits start rolling. Now, I want to get this out of the way, Mally, real early. Uh, this movie does end, spoiler alert, uh, with the resurrection of Jesus. However, Shit. it's over 120 minutes of a guy being tortured and about eight seconds of him rising from the dead. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, when we get to the ending, I have some thoughts. I'm sure you do. Okay, I tried. I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast before. I'm not a religious person. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I tried to watch, on this rewatch, I was like, no, I don't care what the religious story is, I've read the Bible, I'm familiar, that shit Mm -hmm. reads like a crackhead's fever dream, by the way, Mm -hmm. at some points. Revelations Mm -hmm. is fucking wild. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I was like, let's just, I was like, I'm gonna watch this just from a pure, like, film, like, writing standpoint. Like, how does this movie hold up as an actual (laughs) story from, like... Like, cl- like three act structure, the hero's mm-hmm. journey. Like, how's mm-hmm. all that gonna apply to this movie? It doesn't. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it. Jesus doesn't have an arc. No, he does. In fact, it's so funny you brought this up because uh, we have a guest I'm gonna introduce here in a second. We were actually watching it in sync last night, and I was saying the exact same thing. I was like, the structure of this movie is all over the place. There is, no- oh. I can't get my ground, my footing in any moment of this movie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, we do have a guest joining us on the show. I thought it was interesting, Bally. Last week, uh, off air, we were talking about we really need to have a guest on the show that at least has some religious affiliation, if possible, with this movie. And so I went out and got one of my Jewish friends to be on the show. <laughs> so at least, uh, please let me introduce our guest for this episode on our 100th foray into this shit. It is Adam Canfer. Adam, thank you so much for joining us, and I am sorry. <laughs> I mean, I've seen worse, but this was definitely an experience. You've seen to worse? Watch. I don't know, man. This is like a snuff film we're watching. <laughs> I mean, ha- have you seen the room? That was a. Sh- that We've was done it. the room. <laughs> oh yeah, we we have we have covered that film. We've covered Wait, that which room. One? The yeah. disaster artist or the room? Oh, the disaster. Oh. Art. No, you you mean no, like no, we a, covered we covered the room. Oh, the room. The room. <laughs> You're not talking about room with Brie Larson because that's a totally different movie. No, no, no. Okay. I'm talking, yeah, I'm no, talking we did to Tommy the Lizzo. room. Yeah, 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 we did the and room. I'm gonna say at least that was entertaining. That was entertaining. <laughs> this is not entertainment. This, this is movie, not. This movie's fucking boring. I'm it sorry. Is like very boring. Like say what you will. Like the moment we get into the torture sequence, I zone out because I'm like. Eh, I've seen See, Hostel. I, I, we'll get into it, but there's only one part of this movie I find interesting, and it's probably not what a lot of people are thinking about. So before we do that, though, why don't we talk about what our relationship is with this movie? Um, Mally, I know you said you had seen this before. Uh, when was the uh, first time you saw it, and how did sir, this rewatch do for you? Sir. 
Mm-hmm. I saw this in theaters when it came out. <laughs> I almost did a spit take. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, I was like, no way. Yeah, 100%. I, I, was like, I was like, I was like, I was like 15 at the time, and I literally saw trailers for it. I was like, what the hell? Oof. Oof. I was like, like, literally, I had to talk my mother into taking me to see this. Because I was like, Lisa, take me to see it. She's like, no. Like, we were on, like, it came out when we were, like, it was out in theaters. We were on vacation in Florida. And I was like, Lisa, take me to the movies. And she's like, we're not going to go see that. I'm like, please. So I It's not a my vacation group. movie. I will oh, say I, that. Up, I literally it's not a like movie. It's not went, a kid movie either. <laughs> they went like to like go do like uh ski doos or something one day. I was like, no, take drop me off. <laughs> the passion <laughs> so of the ski doos. I went to see this movie. I was like 15 on vacation in Florida by myself. Ugh. And <laughs> I like I went like I got I got me a big soda. I got some bunch of crunch, and I was like, I gotta see whatever this fucking movie's gonna be. Let me ask you this. How was the theater? Like, packed? Fully packed? Empty? Fucking standing room, bro. Really? <laughs> like, this shit? Wow. And Well, I guess it Florida, that makes packed. sense. That makes sense. Well, I also have to say, when this came out, Mel Gibson was huge. Yeah, huge, he had an, uh, the phone calls hadn't been released yet. <laughs> yeah, well, this hey, movie dude, what, destroyed hey, him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what you will. Like, say what you will about Mel Gibson. The dude's crazy. He's got a cinematic eye, though. He does. Because, like, like, have you seen Apocalypto? I haven't yeah, seen Apocalypto, but, but I've Apocalypto's seen... Apocalypto's fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I, I just have to see movie. it. But and I mean Braveheart, not historically accurate, but yeah. very entertaining. I, I think um, this movie is just it's his passion project, so he wasn't uh, as subjective. Think? Well, he wasn't as objective as he should have been. Everything was, you know. I don't know, bro. He added some stuff. He added a lot of stuff. <laughs> he added some stuff. <laughs> um, what about you, Adam? This was your first time seeing it, so yeah, this- how about you give me like a like a one to three word just summary of how you feel having now seen this movie i'm better off without <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's the recommendation from adam right there just don't even bother <laughs> i'm just saying that was like i'm better off without that's four words bro he went over the quota that's sorry, uh, you know what? i'll allow it i'll allow it it's, i'll go it's... i'm better without um, i'll hyphenate the i am I'm boom better what about just without better without it there you go <laughs> um so but, but i mean what how does this movie like what does it translate to in like i mean you don't you obviously don't speak for the entire jewish community but like this movie's uh, gotta be no. like the for the sake of this episode he does <laughs> <laughs> but like this has got to be like 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 almost like uh like the taboo of like porn for the jewish community right like don't, don't go near it just avoid it at all costs but like is that am i just overthinking things or what Oh, no, I mean, like, I'll re- I remember when it came out, my uncle, like, goes, yeah, I'm never seeing another Mel Gibson movie. He's just <laughs> anti-Semitic. I can't do it. Like, fuck, He got, he no. got in on the train early then. Jeez. Yeah. He had some foresight. I mean, I mean what, what has he done really since Passion? He's done Hacksaw Ridge, like, directing-wise. And that was a decent uh, movie. Wait, wasn't that- Apoc- Apocalypto was post this? Was it? Yeah, Let me yeah. look it up real quick. Yeah, that was 06, 07. You might be right. Um, I, I am. I, I, one, I am you're probably right. <laughs> I am definitely right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Apocalypto and Hacksaw, and I think that's Hacksaw it. was ten years after Apocalypto too. So, <laughs> it oh took yeah, a he, while. He, he took a big break. I don't know if that was necessarily a break. <laughs> Might have just or, been you can't make movies for a while. <laughs> that's yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I had I saw this movie. When it was first released on, uh, I think, DVD back in, like, 05, 06. Oh, and bro, you didn't catch the VHS? Damn, I don't right. think I did. Well, here's the thing. I was at my cousin's place, and he had it on. And I was like, all right, I guess we're f- I'm fucking finally watching this movie. Like, he and was I, just, I, like, I was, casually watching it? Like, yeah, like a, like a yeah. Wednesday night? Just like, hey, bro, I'm gonna well, throw something on. Well, it was like a on. whole, like, uh, family Throws gathering. It was the funny oh, thing is, it was like a family okay. gathering thing. And while it was like, you know, some people are in the kitchen, some people are outside playing, other people are just hanging out in the living room, whatever. And this was on, 
and I fell asleep about ten minutes into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your dude. Oh. Movie. Hey guys, let's have a family movie. Let's watch Passion of the Christ. Well, that was the thing. It's not even like, hey everybody, let's gather around and watch it. It's just, eh, just put it on while we're all hanging out, kind of thing. <laughs> See, like. At my house, like in those situations, it's like, oh, we're gonna have a nice family movie night. Like we're throwing on like Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, you, very, this very is not di- very different households. <laughs> this is not a movie you put on if you want to have fun at all. I don't know. There's a drinking game in here somewhere. Oh, I I, I got a drinking game for you. We'll get to it when we get there. But oh hell yeah! This I actually re. I guess rewatched. No, I guess it's not. I guess it's a fresh watch since I never finished it. I watched it then, technically for the first time earlier this year, and just out of curiosity, I was like, you know what? I've never seen it. I'm about to be 30 years old. I feel like I. It's been almost half my life since this movie's been released. I should probably watch it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I man, I watched it with Priscilla. Both of, her and I were just losing our fucking minds during the entire movie. Um. Uh, and I was like, I think even then is when I said, Mala, we could possibly do this movie on the show. And I think around that Probably. time was when we started discussing it as our 100th episode. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, this rewatch, man, it's, you're right. It's a very boring movie. The pacing really is, is so slow. It's, it's so, so slow. Like, so confusing, too, with the flashbacks. Like, I just don't oh, understand God, the, the placement. fucking flashbacks. Uh, Jesus are we going to talk about how the fact that this movie implies that Jesus invented chairs? Yes! <laughs> oh, my God! Thank you so much for bringing this up. That's one of my notes, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. But first, why don't we talk about the making and the details of The Passion of the Christ? So, the year is 2004. Uh, the director, Mel Gibson, as we mentioned. Um, starring a bunch of people that I'm not going to bother trying to butcher their names. Um, but, nice, uh, nice. J- Jim Caviezel plays Jesus Christ, um, who I am not familiar with at all other than this movie. Let me say, I do really like him. I, I'm very He's good. surprised. Yeah. I was he, very surprised he chose this movie. He, he, he gives done, a great performance. He hasn't done much since this. You know, it's funny. We were, as we were watching it last night, Adam and I, I was looking up his IMDb, and this dude starred in a movie called Paul, Apostle of Christ, where he plays Luke. So this dude is, like, huh. taking over the Christian cinematic well, universe. <laughs> like, he was, here. like, the only other thing I can think of he's done since this, he was in that, uh, uh, that one show, uh, the dude from yeah, Lost Outlander? was in it. Person no. of interest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where I know him from. But then I saw him in uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, he's been in some stuff, but it's mostly stuff that I've never bothered seeing, like <laughs> the Thin Red Line and stuff like that. I've never seen Wyatt Earp. He plays Warren Earp. But yeah, I mean, he's the best part of this movie. I think like he gives. Oh, he's 100%. really giving this performance. <laughs> Um, but it's a shame that like nothing. And, you know, what? I'll even say most of the actors in this movie do a damn fine job given what they're given but oh i the the acting is not it's you know i'm not gonna critique the acting the yeah. ac- acting act i mean the only other person in this movie that i know by name is monica bellucci who plays uh mary magdalene yeah unnamed i think i think you're just supposed to assume that's her <laughs> um the movie had a budget of 30 million dollars and this is upsetting grossed 612 million dollars worldwide that's that is so. What you're telling me is that it's a little Jesus, bit of a success. Well, something I want to address. This was the top-grossing R-rated film mm-hmm. of all time until, until it was ousted by Deadpool. Yep. What? AKA dick, <laughs> yep. dick jokes are more powerful than Jesus. Well, it's interesting too because like this is. Right before the MCU stuff, where like making a billion dollars wasn't as big of a deal as it is now, right? So like this was a huge deal that this movie made this much money. Like I think the only other movie before that that really hit this mark was like Titanic. Yeah, you know, like I mean, Dark Knight, early Spider Man, right? Oh, that might be a good point. Yeah, maybe the some Spider Man movies did, but uh, it was still like even crossing five hundred million dollars was a huge deal, and this one. The point is, that. Jesus is not the most financially successful superhero. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, too. After we finished watching it, uh, past guest on the show that was watching it with us as well, Michael Moss, 
he said we need a post credit scene where Sam Jackson shows up and asks him to, to be in the Avengers. That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah. Like I'd God, I'd watch that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh this movie currently sits at a forty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. How's um, it that high? Yeah. I figured it would be higher, honestly, just because of like the fan base, like the people that really like this movie. I figured it would be higher. But uh forty nine percent, I mean you didn't even make it in the top half, man. Yep. It was nominated yeah, for. Uh, made it that percent. Yeah, uh, it was nominated for three Oscars, including Best Cinematography, Best Original Score, and Best Makeup. Um, makeup. It. The makeup's pretty good. I didn't care makeup's for the good. score. I didn't care for the score that much. The um, score is. You the, know, cinemat- the cinematography's not bad. The score is funny because I swear to God, there's when he's um being like tried for the first time, and not in like. The Roman courtyard when he's in like the temple at the very beginning and they're like spinning on him and stuff. Yeah. yeah. When he starts getting beaten and Peter's like denying him over and over, I swear to God the score was going to turn into My Heart Will Go On. Like I don't have the <laughs> clip pulled, but I, I promise you it feels like it's about to hit that crescendo and it never does. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been great. Uh, so there's no trailer we're going to play this week just because the trailer is mostly music. Uh, all you need to know about the trailer is uh, the graphics, the titles are terrible. It's awful. <laughs> um, so let's tell you no further. Let's get into the movie. Um, okay. All right. So this is basically based off the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm-hmm. Now, I strongly considered rereading those parts of the Bible to see how accurate the movie was. You don't need to reread them. I yeah, mean, it's not, it's yeah, not I, very accurate. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, one thing I will say is that the Gospels barely mention the torture of Jesus. And, like, the Gospels are mainly just talking about his teachings. And this movie completely reverses that ratio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's just all torture. You barely, like, if you, like, from a f- strictly, like, film and writing perspective, this movie does a horrible job setting up our main character. Like, if you don't go into this movie already knowing who Jesus is, mm-hmm. you're going to be real confused. That was one of my first notes. I was like, this movie must be extremely confusing for anyone that doesn't know the story of Jesus. Like, all they're seeing at the beginning of this movie is there's a guy basically having a mental breakdown in a swamp, and then an albino shits a snake out that that guy then stomps to death. Like, Dude, that, oh my that's god. That's where we're starting. <laughs> the I laughed so hard. I forgot about what about Satan being in this movie. Mm-hmm. And, dude, literally last night, I watched Bill and Ted face the music. <laughs> so all uh-huh. I could see was fucking William Sadler talking to Jesus. <laughs> I mean, and it made it so much harder to like take it seriously. The, the character of Satan in this movie just it seems like such a non sequitur. Like it's it's so unessential because it does the, the character doesn't do anything. And again, you have to put the pieces together that this is who this character is supposed to be. Yeah, and then. I- Again, that's something they added. Satan wasn't present in these gospels. <laughs> um, well, and then like the, the whole, design. Shitting, out, shitting out a snake didn't happen. That's clear, <laughs> that's clearly just like, oh, y'all remember the book of Genesis? Like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck off. And or the design, about, like, the design of Satan in this movie, he looks like the alien girl from Splice. That's all I could think of. Or dude, Satan's a woman. She's, she's, he, very could be. Very well could be. It's very it's an, literally androgynous. played by a woman. And then when she's like literally holding the baby that looks like a midget man. <laughs> oh, the demon baby. So weird. The demon baby is weird. What um, is going on there? I, 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 I will pay anybody 30 bucks to explain to me what the fuck that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be the Antichrist. Well, possibly, but what what purpose That's all does that serve? Yeah, no, exactly. What no. purpose does that serve well, at that moment? Okay, and prepare yourselves, because, oh boy, I'm about to rant real quick. Okay. Uh, right. Everyone take a deep breath. <laughs> the fact that this movie only depicts the last 12 hours of Jesus' life is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, it completely rips the story away from its historical, and yes, historical is in quotes there, mm-hmm. like, the context. <laughs> like, it just doesn't, like... It makes no sense. Like, um, I, all right, I'm actually just going to straight up fucking read this article real quick. Y'all okay. ready? Great. Yeah. All right. Even if the passion adhered in every detail to the specific narratives of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and or the gospel of John, it would, ne- it would be neither accurate nor fair to take these texts as scripts 
for the arrest, trial, and crucifixion of Jesus. That is, because these texts were not written down at the time, nor were they written by actual witnesses to the events. Instead, they were composed two generations later and hundreds of miles away between 17 and 90 CE, and outside of the area of the Levant, because the gospel authors were writing for an audience who did not live at the time or in the place of the events that were narrating... (gasps) They worked to put the events of Jesus' trial and death within the larger historical context of his life and mission. In his own narrative choices, however, Mel Gibson has chosen to ignore what the gospel writer strove to supply by focusing on the last 12 hours of Jesus' life. Gibson has ripped, ripped this event from its historical context and rendered it unintelligible with no apparent reason for the crucifixion of Jesus aside from blaming evil Jews and Romans. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> but no. Everything you said is pretty much accurate. Mel Gibson, this movie is him jerking off to the idea that Jews are bad. Like, that's all I get from it. Like, I mean, go ahead. Like, yeah, I was just going to say, like, as I told you, as we were watching last night, Dustin, I was like, the Jews made me think I'm watching Egyptians. Like, Jews <laughs> flaunting their gold since yeah. when? Did, I've never seen a Jew. Well, that that's, that's the their stereotype, money. right? Like, the, the, the greedy money hungry jew like that's the the big hollywood stereotype and then the first time you see one is judas and that's the first instance of no many the first instances. time you see a jew is when you see jesus well no i'm jesus saying like the, jewish. i know i know i'm saying the first instance <laughs> of the stereotype is with judas oh. and that's the first instance that he chooses to use slow-mo and it's the guy throwing the coins at him and then, of course, Judas on the ground picking them up. I'm like, man, this uh, this doesn't look very good. Well, it's and like they also, like, in order to make, like, Jewish people look more evil, they make the, like, they make Pontius Pilate look more sympathetic. I like, know. He's, he's trying that to, like, rein them problem. in. I'm like, uh, he was a fucking tyrant. Like, Thank you. What? Uh, that's one of my notes, too, is that, like, he really goes out of his way to make, I mean, he makes the Romans look bad, but he really makes the Jewish people look bad, but and Pontius Pilate in this movie is played almost like he's a saint. Like he's like, like him washing his blood, the blood from his hands and stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I, Hey man, I have nothing to do with this. It's yeah, like so they, bizarre. They literally portray him as like a, well, I tried to stop it. Yep. Like what? No. It, 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 it is interesting because that's the most, I mean, Pontius Pilate in this movie is the most interesting part to me. Like his struggle between, you know, following Caesar's order or being, you know, he even says, like, if I, if there's any uprest in this city, like, Caesar is going to kill me. And then it's like, if I don't do that, then Siophias, the other Jewish guy, he's like, he will have an uprising in this city. So it's like, I'm stuck in this corner. That's so much more interesting to me, the story of Pontius Pilate and Claudia, than than Jesus. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What, I, what about Pontius Pilate's uh, number two, who was supposed to watch out for them and like the most always disappear, the most incompetent manager I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, I don't know if you noticed this, but Adam and I were pointing it out last night. Anytime this dude tells his guards to do something, he never supervises it, and then when he comes back. It's like uh, that gift from Community of of uh, Donald oh, Glover Donald coming Glover in, walking back into the apartment. Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Punish this guy, but don't kill him. And then they, there's no feasible way anyone would survive just that part of Jesus's torture. Like no way, they would die from oh. either shock or blood loss. One hundred percent. And then he's like, "Hey, I told you to to beat him, not kill him." And then like, dude, you should you came in like ten minutes too late for that. And then it happens then, again when Jesus is carrying the cross and he physically can't carry it anymore. And so they start beating him and he rides up on his horse like, hey, you dummies, can't you see he can't carry it? And I'm like, dude, stay with these guards. Like, Just be a do a good job of being a leader. I don't know. It's just, the whole movie is like that for that character. He never can just supervise his team even for a moment. It's ridiculous. I don't know how he got to be, like, second in command to Pontius. It's ridiculous. I want to know, like, where he goes. Like, what else does he have going on? Yeah, the whole city is around for this. Where are you going? <laughs> or what about the whole fact that the guards let the two women just easily walk up to Jesus and take care of him? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, no, no. Let's let the rioters, let's stop them, but the women can come. Yeah. That's fine. That one woman can come and uh, offer him a, a towel and a drink, but... I mean, well, it's, she can offer him a towel, but as soon as she gives him a drink, fuck no, we gotta <laughs> snatch him away. <laughs> I Wait, don't speaking know, of man. towels, what about when what's her face gives um 
Claudia gives the wife the towels, and they go and use those towels to start cleaning up Jesus' blood after the mm-hmm. torture. <laughs> uh, see, we had an interesting back and forth about that last night, too, because I took that as, because of how, like, upset Claudia is when she's giving the two Marys the towels. Like, she's, like, visibly upset, fighting back tears. I thought she was offering them the towels as, like, a gift of, like, a, hey, we know this is real shitty what's happening to your son but uh how about these nice linens <laughs> can i can i offer you a lovely towel in this trying time exactly and then when you're like no i think she was telling her hey you gotta clean up this mess <laughs> no i didn't say it that way i was saying it more the fact like they literally took her towels and then went to go clean up his blood so it's like what was she thinking? What was Claudia thinking about giving them towels? I, I don't know. Like I said, I I thought maybe it was like a gift, like a, well, see, a like a nice my, gesture. But my thought during that scene was they're gonna need more towels. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, gonna need like some that's more not towels. gonna soak all that up. Like, mm-hmm. come on now. Um, I I spilled coffee this morning. It took it took like three or four bad boys to like get that <laughs> shit up. So can can anyone explain to me why blood is hard to clean? <laughs> It just doesn't come out either. Like, just gonna, it does, like that shit stains. Adam, just gloss over that. <laughs> <Let's move on. laughs> why? Can somebody explain to me why in this movie, Jesus' eyes are orange? Oh my god. You saw orange, I saw yellow. I was just thinking he was raised by wolves. <laughs> like, the, uh, maybe it's just the contrast on my nah, screen. Bro, they were I've, I've super seen the star, orange. I've seen the Star Wars prequels. He's going to the dark side, yeah, bro. He's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but like. Even in, like, the flashbacks when he's not being harmed. I thought maybe it was, like, oh, some blood vessels burst in his eye. That's what they're trying to show. No, he's just got orange eyes. Well, and that's the thing. His eyes, like, they altered Jim Caviezel's eyes digitally. Oh, his, it looks he, so bad. <laughs> he has blue eyes, and they digitally changed them to brown, I think. Well, if they went for brown, they, uh... They, <laughs> that was not brown. They someone's were not brown. Co- someone's colorblind. <laughs> that's me, definitely, but still. Yeah. Um... So we we talked about the historical inaccuracies of this thing. Um, I just historical think, is always in quotes when we yeah, say that. Yes, just so yeah. everyone knows. Um, I just think if even if you put all of that aside and you're literally just looking at at this as a movie, it's just structurally so so bad. Like you mentioned, there's no arc really for Jesus' as a character. Um, there's no there's no first, second, third act that I can really think of. I mean it. The fact that he goes to Pontius, they send him to King Herod, and then he has to come back to Pontius is such a waste of time. And, the, like, you could cut out that entire King Herod scene, like, as wild and ridiculous as that scene like, is. I'm literally trying to think, like, what? So the second act would just have to be everything from his torture to his death. And then the third act is him waking up in the cave, I guess? That last eight seconds? I would, those, yeah, those eight seconds. <laughs> I would say... First act is beginning of the movie up until they decide to crucify him. Okay. Second act is literally just the tra- traveling with the cross. <laughs> and then third act is when they drop the cross in that hole and he's just there to wait and die. That's what I would say. But that's very loose. Like, nothing really propels anything from one to another. You know what I mean? Like... And the flashbacks we talked about are so just nonsensical and contrived. Like, it's only in there when he needs a moment of levity. Like, hey, I know you guys have been watching this guy be tortured for about 30 minutes. Let me throw in this quick nine-second scene uh, of Jesus giving bread to somebody. And we're back to the torture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, he invents chairs. Yeah. Let's talk about that, too. I can't get over that. I love how in this world chairs exist and tables exist, but no one has thought to put chairs to a table. No and then one when, had put them together. And then when Jesus suggested it, his mom was like, oh, that'll never catch on. What? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Apparently it's brand new to them. Just can't believe it. <laughs> um, what what else do we got to get into, man? Because there's, there's a lot that we could be uh, saying. I mean which part of the torture is the most fucked up i guess like there's not a lot to talk about (laughs) of like stuff that actually happens in this movie not plot wise anyway there's not really a yeah there's not really a plot like hey they beat this guy to death that's pretty much it that's it that's the plot um, that's it 
that and the fact that so few characters are actually named makes it like I I swear they don't name Monica Belushi's character. They don't. Like, yeah. Honestly, I didn't know her name until I looked it up on IMDb. Yeah, and she's supposed to be like Jesus's girl, pretty much. Like it's, it's and what do you think? It's weird that Jesus decided to side with a girl, like get with a girl that had the same name as his mom. Or was it like because back then oh, there were so man. few names? Fucking <laughs> cool. <laughs> I never thought about that until this movie. I was like, yeah, they both have the name Mary. Um, I will say, just watching that, this movie too, it just made me want to play Assassin's Creed a bunch. That is some god <laughs> Freud just like is just freaking out start. about that. Miley's still freaking out about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? It's they have more in this movie: spitting on Jesus or slow motion. Because Jesus gets spits on a lot. There's so much spitting in this movie. <laughs> I mean, especially during his hike with the cross, he gets spit on the entire wall. Oh, dude, and when he's at the trial at the beginning, like in the temple, every time they call a quote unquote witness up to him, he gets spit on. Like it's so. Uh, what are those witnesses saying? They, what were they witnessing? Well, they were they were not real witnesses. That was uh, Syphus bringing up people quote unquote as witnesses and they're just on his side being like yeah i've seen this dude he's a piece of shit that's basically all they were doing which is yeah. i mean it, jesus christ dude and that's an <laughs> unironic jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> man do, can i quote you, you mentioned an article can i quote the one article from roger ebert that i thought just from his oh, review of this movie that i thought oh, was, i can't wait to hear what he thought about it so this is it's interesting. Roger Ebert gave this movie four out of four stars. What um, the fuck? Yes. So his whole uh, defense of this movie was: Look, I know people are going to see this movie as anti-Semitic, but hear me out. That was pretty much his review. However, this section from his review I thought was pretty poignant about why so many people feel that way. So he says. In the movie scenes showing Jesus being condemned to death, the two main players are Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and Caiaphas, the Jewish high priest. Both men want to keep the lid on about Jesus, while, while neither is especially eager to see Jesus crucified. Side note, wrong. Caiaphas has got a hard-on for getting this dude crucified. <laughs> um, they live in a harsh time where such a man is dangerous. Pilate is seen going through his well-known doubts before finally washing his hands, literally, of the matter and turning Jesus over to the priest, but Caiaphas, who also had doubts, is not seen as sympathetically. Yes, very true. He's shown as being a total dickhead in this movie. Um, <laughs> the film critic Stephen D. Gradenus, uh, in a useful analysis of the film, writes, This film omits the canonical line from John's Gospel, in which Caiaphas argues that it is better for one man to die for the people so that the nation be saved. Had Gibson retained this line, perhaps giving Syphus a measure of inner conflict that he gave to Pilate, it could have underscored the similarities between Syphus and Pilate and helped defuse the issue of anti-Semitism. Which, 100%, duh! This whole movie, the character of Syphus is like, has, he has no moral conscience, he has no conflict, all he wants is for Jesus to be crucified. That's it. And it's funny because, you know, when he first goes to Pontius, Pontius is like, what do you want me to do with him? And he says, crucify him. And Ponch is like, no, 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 no. Here's what I'll do. You go to King Herod. He's your, that's your king. Let him judge this guy. King Herod laughs him literally out of the room. And then they come back. They're like, hey, crucify this dude. No, no, no. Here's what I'll do. I'll torture him and then give him back to you. And then again, the whole time, Saf is like, nope, crucify this dude. It's like, why so hell bent on the crucifixion? <laughs> and you also then, skipped one part. He was able to. They literally was offering to a murderer yes. for Jesus. <laughs> and they fucking choose to release the murderer. What the fuck? Who is like one of few people in this movie to have horrendous teeth. I think all the Jewish people have horrendous teeth in this movie for the most part. <laughs> like, I feel like that was a choice by Mel Gibson. But yeah, Barbarous, I think is the guy's name. The murderer who is so laughably insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's just, I mean, that really happens in the Bible, but it's just so, it just seems so extra in this movie, you know what I mean? Like, he goes out of his way to really show the Jewish people in a negative light. Like, it's it's is it any wonder why this movie was considered, like, the most anti-Semitic movie ever? <laughs> Man, I don't know. The moment they start torturing him, I just, like, zoned out. 
Yeah. And like, no, I mean, like I, I said, I, so I, much story. I literally like pulled up my phone, was like browsing like Reddit. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> nope, they're they're still flogging him. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I find the most interesting parts the political like tug of war between Pontius and I wish we'd got Caesar in this movie. I would have sacrificed the King Herod scene to have Caesar there. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe also, like, maybe that's what I want from this movie. I want it to be from Pontius's point of view. Interesting. I just want this movie not to exist. <laughs> that's I'm 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 with him on yeah. this one. I'm with him. Yeah, I'm just if you have like, to. If this was a, you know, I said this too. This movie feels like a first draft because of like how like shoehorned in the flashbacks feel and like how you, well, nonsensical it's like you get they too are. Much credit. I see as this as more on the drawing board. Like fuck, like let's just throw everything up of what we know mm-hmm. and put it together as best as we can. That's a good point. Yeah, it does. It feels like there's no cohesive tissue there. Like, well, especially like. If you compare this to like, uh, was it fucking Scorsese's flick, The Last Temptation mm-hmm. of Christ? Mm-hmm. Like, the, at least that one's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't love that movie. It's not bad. It's all right. It's better than this fucking shit. Yeah, but like, at least there's a plot in that movie. Like, they like. Have you ever seen Last Temptation of Christ? I have not. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. So like, a, like there's a big chunk of the movie that like. So, like, you know, if I can, you get, first off, Willem Dafoe plays Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's so right. Let, right. Let me start off there. Okay. Um, Like, Dafoe's up on the cross. He's chilling. And then, like, fucking Satan shows up. And, give, and like, that's the whole point is he tempts him one last time. Mm-hmm. And there's this whole segment where it's, like, Jesus goes and, like, has a normal family and shit. Mm-hmm. And then after that, he's like, no, wait, I can't do this. I need to die for all man's sins. And he goes back to the cross and he like dies and shit. Okay. Um, but like, like it, it, it did. Try, it sounds like, like an arc. It, it did. <laughs> yeah. There's, he has an arc. Like it, like it, there's a story there kind of at yeah. least. Yeah. And, but this, but then this movie, they're just like, what if we just beat the fuck out of Jesus for two hours? <laughs> and then at the end. He comes back. Yeah. I feel Which, like this God movie... damn. Cliffhanger, bro. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I feel like Dude, this imagine movie... Imagine if they just didn't have him come back. Or well, they just opened... Bold! I mean, not to, not to spoil it, but there is a sequel in, in like, pre-production. <laughs> they, dude, they've been talking about that sequel since this one. I mean, it's scheduled for 2022. I mean, so, what, A Passion of the Christ 2? Guess what the yeah. subtitle is. Passion of the Christ, colon, and I'm going to let he you take a guess. He won't be crossed again. I'm going to let you take a guess. No way. What the, what, the, what the subtitle is, Adam. What do you um, think? Passion of the Christ 2, colon. Oh, I see it, so I'm not going to say it. I oh, okay. just it up. <laughs> Re- <laughs> Revelations. It was, it was not what I thought. I was thinking. I um, think it's, 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 it's you know, it's it two on the be, nose. It better be like hard as fuck. Fuck, Mm-mm. but it's it's, it's not the word you would it. expect. Is he mine? I was thinking, <laughs> Passion of the Christ. He lives. He lives no. <laughs> with an exclamation point at the end. Exactly. No, Don't it's like it's Passion of the Christ Resurrection, which is like the f- easiest fucking subtitle to a movie ever. <laughs> um, I feel like like wouldn't it like if so you do the Passion of the Christ? Shouldn't mm-hmm. the next one be called the Resurrection of the Christ? Hmm. Yeah, like I feel like that would be better. Yeah, I mean, I so much easier. Better is is only can only go so far with this franchise. It's weird. I have to say franchise now. <laughs> um, are we this... getting a Jesus cinematic universe? Like, are we getting the JCU? Because I'm oh fuck I'm, oh my god wait what if they do like a villain centric movie? We get a whole movie about Satan. I mean, right, I just realized this, but the guy who plays Jesus, his initials are also JC. Yeah, bro. He God was destined to play Jesus. Well, Which, was if, he? So if, because well, no, I have no, to... hang on. so <laughs> if what if we get like I'm I'm on this JCU thing now. Like, okay. what if we get like a like a Joker esque movie of Satan, like and falling it, like, out of heaven? Yeah, but like it only like. Because there's that one shot of Satan screaming from the depths of hell in this movie, and like it looks like something out of a Nine Inch Nails video. <laughs> yeah, it does. But like you get Trent Reznor to score it. <laughs> oh I'd my watch god! That. We get Fincher to direct a movie about Satan. It's like a Satan origin story. Reznor does the score, 
and then it t- like and then we get a post credits <laughs> like of him like with Jesus mm-hmm. and then that leads into like Passion of the Christ 3 uh <laughs> Genesis or Revelations. Well, you know it's funny. You and then it's include... just like, and then that's like the end game of the JCU, <laughs> where it's just like Jesus versus Satan. Does that make then Aronofsky's Noah like the uh, Incredible Hulk movie of this universe? Yeah, where like, where, like it's, it's tied in, but well, not see, really. Like, so it's <laughs> it, it's a part of the JCU, but they're gonna recast Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna get fucking uh. Uh, Seth Rogen to play Noah. Mm-hmm. It's funny. You, you wait. You, you know what? I don't think Seth Rogen would be in the JCU. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> wait, Dustin, did you read the summary, the plot summary for the? Uh, I have not. Is there a plot summary for this? By Johnny Pressburg on IMDb Pro. <laughs> oh shit! Well, you want to read it to me? Sure. It is. This film is the sequel of Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. The Passion of the Christ focuses on the 24 hours encompassing Jesus Christ's passion. In the same fashion, the sequel focuses on the events that occur three days between the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Oh, so it's kind of like it's in between the climax of this movie and then the final scene of this movie. That's... What what possibly could you have in that to make it exactly. interesting? How's that about Jesus? Well, what like Jesus is dead? How are you going to fill two hours with that? Like, what is gonna, what is going to happen there? It's, it's going to be all people, flashbacks. It's just a bunch of people sitting around, like, "Hey, man, did you hear Jesus died? Shit, man, yeah, I heard. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, you want to go get some tacos? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Jim Caviezel as being like destined to play Jesus. Um, he was struck by a lightning while filming this movie. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. Him, I heard about that. And the and, AD. Yeah. What? The assistant the assistant director was struck twice by lightning. <laughs> 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 we talk about curse movies like The Exorcist and Poltergeist and stuff. Nobody really brings up the passion of the Christ in that instance where three people or at least three different times people were struck by lightning in this making of this movie. <laughs> um we talked about earlier about um uh, about playing a drinking game in this movie. Matt, I have one for you. Um how many times do you think Jesus falls while carrying the cross because it's a lot and i counted this time 56 you're close it's five fucking times five times we have to see this guy in slow motion drop the cross sit on the ground have like that tom hanks and saving private ryan kind of pov where everything's slowed down and then get (laughs) back up five fucking times we have to see that and i was i was blown away i was like do we really need this this many times Anyway, um, apparently, why don't we get to the ending? Uh, Mally, do you want to? <laughs> I don't know if you can really recap the ending of this in, of this movie, but do you want to do your best what, job? Those eight seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Jesus dies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, we forgot and, to talk about the, uh, the other two guys that are being crucified with Jesus. That oh yeah, Mel, Mel Gibson uh, does no effort to explain who those two guys are. <laughs> they're two dudes yeah one of them believes in jesus i believe and the other one just like goes where's your god where's your dad yeah like where's your daddy buddy <laughs> hey wait, wait hey where's your pops at yeah wait are we gonna talk about the fucking like crow that oh yeah the fucking uh, it like, is, what like, it's so that on the nose man did everything happen <laughs> yeah it's like i mean we get it Jesus is a good guy that's being tortured. We don't need to see the literal parallels. It's like we, the devil uh, and the yeah, angel on we, his shoulder. We don't know Jesus is a good guy. We don't see it's Jesus d- being a good he guy. Does, well, we he just... does put the ear back on that guy at the well, beginning. And also the crow guy. Like, why are you looking at the crow? Yeah, just why are you keeping look your eyes away. Up? Look away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, it was very dumb. That's like, true. Like they, prob- keeps... they, they probably seen crows like every- that. Sh- them shit was everywhere. Well, he keeps looking at the crow as it's pecking his eye out. Tilt your head down, buddy. <laughs> do you want to hear do. something crazy? Hmm. I'm looking at IMDb's trivia, mm-hmm. like some random ass facts. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Okay, so on the first uh, day of general release, Ash Wednesday, mm-hmm. a 56-year-old, I'm not going to say her name, advertising sales manager from Wichita, Kansas, collapse of apparent heart failure while watching the crucifixion scene. She later died at the hospital. Oh, my God. Mel Gibson's oh got a death God, on his hand. That's sad. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. movie, there was a lot of that kind of stuff coming out. Like, oh, people are fainting in the audience. That happens 
I think we talked about this with uh, Hereditary, that like that happens a lot with horror movies. Very rarely do you hear that about the very niche genre of Christian movies. Dude, right? I don't know, man. This is right up, th- like, this is up there in terms of, like, brutality with, like, hostile and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it is. Yeah. But, and fucking- also, one other thing, like, Dustin, you were mentioning the budget. This film had more pre ticket sales than any other film in history until The Force Awakens. I was just going to say, probably till, till Star Wars, yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Because I mean, space Jesus is more interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, this movie is so unnecessarily cruel. Like, I get it. This guy's going to be tortured and crucified. But and this is a good question, too. Apparently, Gibson re-edited the movie and took five minutes worth of the most violent stuff out. Do we know if the version on Amazon is the re-edited version or is it the full one? Does anybody know? Uh, no, I, cause I think it had a different, t- I think it was called like the passion recut or something you, you're like that. You're probably right. Did um, you watch this on Amazon too, Melly? Oh, hell yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Why? I wasn't going to pay for this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we all saw the same version though, that like we weren't watching on like voodoo or something. Cause I think, um, yeah, bro, I watched the director's cut. <laughs> it's uh, six hours long. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this considered an independent movie at the time? And like 20th Century Fox just released it. Like, wasn't this along the lines of, like, um, the Star Wars prequels or, like, Mel Gibson self-funded it and then just found a distributor? Because if that's so, this is a pretty successful uh, independent film to make, you know, almost $600 million more than your budget. It's pretty insane. I can't believe it did that. Yeah. Credit where credit's due. Anyway, so the end of this movie. Yeah. Little issue here. Mm -hmm. So he comes back from the dead. Mm -hmm. And he still has his wounds from the nails in his hands, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So, in theory, shouldn't he have all the other wounds, too? Yeah, I thought about that, too. Like, shouldn't his face and shit be all kinds of fucked up? Yeah, he's in pristine condition except for the stigmata holes, pretty much. And also, again, just no religion tied to it, just from a writing standpoint. Like, people, like, I remember people calling out, like, Winter Soldier for, like, all the fake, like, the fake out deaths they did, like, with Nick Fury and shit. Yeah. Or like Chewbacca and Rise of Skywalker. That like one no, I personally no am one, offended by. <laughs> no one gives a shit when Jesus does it. <laughs> well, like, I'm sorry. From a writing standpoint, it's like, okay, the last two hours were fucking pointless. Yeah. Well, not even that. I mean, you have this whole movie, two hours plus of this guy and his life and him being tortured. You wrap it up in like nine seconds with one shot. There, There's no other shots in this, this little ending here it's so bizarre like you would think there would be like a scene in between of like you know mary magdalene talking to uh, the virgin mary and like you know oh what they did was fucked up yes but yeah like give me something like give me something the way the end plays out like honestly when it cut to black i was like okay when's he gonna say to be continued (laughs) oh you know he was waiting for that sequel like this was like it reminded me like the ending of uh matrix reloaded Mm-hmm. Which say what you will about fucking Matrix uh, Revolutions, but the Reloaded fucking had en- a great ending. the ending of Reloaded is rock and roll mm-hmm. as fuck, mm-hmm. and like I li- and like it hits you with like that shot of him and the Mister Smith looking like another dude, and then hits you with like to be concluded. Yeah, that's I was waiting for that in this. I'm like, oh shit, hell yeah, like to be continued. Here we go. Well, like. And then I, it just cuts to the title. I'm like, that's not what I was expecting. There, sh- there should be a scene of like the apostles all gathering around and stuff. Like, because Peter goes real quick out of this movie, and you don't see him again. <laughs> oh yeah, um, the apostles fucking dip. Except for Luke, looks like the only one that's that's the one that's with Mary, right, the whole time. Is he even named in this movie? I don't fucking know any of their names, <laughs> dude. Like, like, are you kidding me? Names. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the only reason I know who who Peter is really is because of the denial stuff, because that's in the Bible. And I don't think it it's funny in the Bible. I think that happens over the course of like a day. And in this movie, it happens in like four minutes of him like Very denying quick him. succession. <laughs> Just, and then the fact that they put the flashback in right after that happens, it's like, dude, this is only here for people that didn't read the the book, which is fine. If people don't read the book and then they come into this movie, but then you've got to do a little bit more building than this. You can't be hand-holding the entire way through this movie. Every flashback was like that, man. It's like, oh, people might be confused here. Let me put in a quick scene explaining things. And we're back to the torture. <laughs> like, I, I don't even get the Last Supper they 
that they broke up into like what three or four yeah. different flashbacks. Yeah. 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 Um, we didn't really talk about Judas either <laughs> with the zombie kids. That's pretty great. And seeing uh, the <laughs> demon at the beginning too. That was pretty well, fun. I like how like. So we see Judas getting chased or, like at dark in the out of the city by these kids, and then the next time we see him, it's like broad daylight. And mm-hmm. He's way out in the mountains. I'm like, how long did these fucking kids chase him could for? You like, holy getting, shit! Could you imagine getting taken down by a bunch of kids like this? Like, dude, just start drop kicking them. Like, it's they're kids. <laughs> it's I mean, so and easy. it started with two of them. Where the fuck did the rest oh. of the, like twelve of them come from? <laughs> Oh, you do, man. Them little kids, man, they multiply. The motherfuckers you, come out the woodwork. You gotta watch out for the kid gang, man. Yeah. <laughs> the zombie me, demon dude. kid game. Yeah. Um, hey, it's 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 a big issue here in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my only other bit of trivia was another... The, the funniest thing that Roger Ebert said in his uh, review of this movie is, this is the most violent movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Which is it's not mean, wrong. It's, it's fucking it, honestly. It's fucking it's up brutal. there. It's, it's up, up there. there. It's brutal. All right. Um, well, why don't we get into what we like to call prop cop? Uh, Adam, this is uh, where Mally and I and you, since you're our guest, uh, pick one prop from the movie that you would like to own for yourself. <laughs> I realize and, and this yes, might be problematic. You, like, you, you can include <laughs> wardrobe, set dressing, whatever you want to do. We're not. We're not. We're we not don't adhere picky. to the prop. Concept. So, Mally, do you have an idea of anything from this movie you think you'd like I to own? I mean... Uh, um, are you thinking or you just you don't want to say? <laughs> bit of both. Okay. Bit of both. I, I might know what you're going to pick, but keep keep guessing. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to pick? Were you going to pick the crown of thorns? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty cool prop. I mean... Take the religious connotation out of it. It's still a pretty cool prop, right? I don't think it's yeah, necessarily a prop, yeah, actually. It's probably part of wardrobe. I mean, but... I take... <laughs> I would take the cross. The whole cross. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. Okay. Or you could take the sign from the cross that says, like, nah. Jesus. And, you want the whole nah, thing? Fuck that. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Wait, like, do you want shit. it with Jesus on it or without shit? That, I mean, hold up. Hold do you want up. it pre crucifixion or post crucifixion? <laughs> Let me get it post. Like, okay. I want that shit weathered, you know? All right. Like, what, that shit what about looks a... good in my living room upside down. <laughs> what about you, Adam? Is there anything from this uh, movie that you think you'd like to own for yourself? Um. I would probably say either the cup Jesus drinks from. Okay. Or the nails that Mel Gibson nails himself onto the cross. <laughs> okay. Um, he literally is quoted saying that it was me that put him on the cross. It was my sins. God that damn put it. Him there. I fucking hate yeah. Mel Gibson now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go out uh, a little out of here. I'm going to go with the table that Jesus builds. It's a pretty nice table. Got the chairs? Yeah, but no chairs. It's on the chairs. No chairs. I just want the table. <laughs> For a while, I was going to say I wanted the coins that Judas, Judas gets at the beginning of the movie. It wasn't even like a super nice table. No, it wasn't. But, like, you it, know, just, it was sturdy. It, it literally looked like the table I have in front of me that I use as my desk. <laughs> um. All right. So, shall we get into... uh? Well, you know what? I'm going to call it. Holy linings for this week. So what is our holy lining? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> for the passion of the Christ. Uh, All right. Y- you know, y- go ahead. Go ahead. Go so ahead. So mine has nothing to do with Jesus, but... Neither does mine. Okay, I hope I didn't step on your toes then. Um, Me too. The other guy that's getting crucified, uh, well, one of the other two guys, he, uh, he gets to go to heaven at the end of this movie because Jesus tells him, <laughs> Hey man, you're gonna be in paradise with me after you die. So there you go. He got uh he was a thief, he was repentant, and even though he got crucified, he got to go to heaven. At the last minute. The ba- the very last minute. <laughs> uh what about you, Mally? Um Oh boy. <laughs> so Brace yourself, Adam. After taking this hard hit. Satan didn't give up. 
Like, you know, he, he may have failed in tempting Jesus and stuff, but you know what? He's still out there. So He's you're, still out there trying to do his thing, trying to turn people. Your silver and, lining you know, is... tempt them and, you know, get them. Your, your silver yeah. lining is Satan lives to fight another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, Adam, I'm, sa- I'm saying, they did my boy dirty in this movie. He Adam, ain't a bad dude. Adam, you are... Just uh, because he's got a different opinion. You know, it's funny, you're right. Satan does nothing really evil in this movie. He doesn't do nothing. He doesn't do anything bad. No, he, he just, just wants a demon baby. That's it. But like morally, just he doesn't do anything. He's got an ugly kid. Yeah, the plenty of people have ugly that kids. Against him. Yeah, uh, Adam, you don't have to have one necessarily. But do you happen to have uh, a? I just came up. I just came. Oh, up okay. One. What do you got? You know that guy who was never there. Maybe he had a wife that's pregnant. You know, maybe he was busy, so like he couldn't always watch his troops. Oh. So that's why he was doing other things. He was being a you good, know, maybe, a good father. He was being a good dad. Yeah, yeah. maybe he's being a good dad. Yeah. I like it. Oh, I got another silver Shitty lining that job. I just thought of. Uh, Pontius Pilate doesn't have to worry about Caesar killing him. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> true, he, he he he's kind of right. He his blood is off his hands. Like he doesn't have anything to do with Jesus being crucified. Really. <laughs> so uh i mean that's all subjective but yeah hey that's... i mean technically speaking satan doesn't have anything to do with him being crucified either jesus did that true. to him damn himself. so it's amazing the like according to this movie jews really are the only reason jesus jesus got crucified Obviously, <laughs> i mean it's all Sa- all satan <sighs> pretty much tell trade tells again bro like you know it's gonna like what you're about to do it's gonna suck like are you sure like yeah you're you're gonna do all right man he's like i right, you know Satan's like, you know what? You do you. You do you. Speaking of that, apparently Mel Gibson told Jim, whatever his last name is, that you should not do this role Mm -hmm. because you won't get another job in Hollywood after it. He's kind of right. I mean, (laughs) the dude hasn't done much that I know of since then. He's not wrong. Yeah. No. Um, He's not. Pick me up. Dustin, what you got? Yeah. You going to do some pick uh, me up movies? If you're new to the show, uh, the pick me up movie alternative, uh, that's where we suggest a second movie that you watch after you watch Passion of the Christ, where if Passion leaves you not feeling too great after watching a guy be tortured for two hours, you can watch one of the movies we recommend as like a double feature. Does that make sense? All right. So, <laughs> mine, I'm pretty proud of my pick me up. Uh, I'm going with the movie Superstar, starring Molly Shannon. Because okay. Passion, you get some Jesus Christ, and then Molly Shannon, you get some Superstar. So you get Jesus Christ, colon, superstar. <laughs> That's a fucking stretch. JCU. JCU. That's a fucking Also, Superstar stretch. is a pretty funny movie. Um, What about you, Mally? What do you have? I have two. Okay. One, I mean, the clear, the obvious choice, in my opinion. Dogma. Oh, yeah. How are you not going to watch Dogma? I love this? Dogma. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Alanis Morissette is gone. Mm-hmm. And she's adorable. Done. <laughs> oh, so good. I love, dude, that was back in like, Kevin Smith was still killing it back that then. That was, yeah, um, he was his, his element. His, like, I mean, his more recent stuff yeah. is not, not great. No. Um, But on that same note, um, because I had just recently watched a Jay and Silent Bob reboot, reboot. I didn't love it. I, I didn't say, love is it. Is it worth it? But. It's, I mean, it's entertaining, plus it's free okay. to watch, so if you have Prime. Um, I'm going to recommend also, because I watched it last night, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Right Because honestly, it's a good fucking time, and also, death looks just like Satan in this movie. <laughs> okay. It is. If you, if you liked the first two Bill and Ted's, you'll dig it. So Adam, you also don't have to have a, a pick-me-up idea in mind, but is there any movie you can think of that after you watch Passion would be a good pairing? Of like uh, bringing people's spirits back up. Um, a movie that I like is The Count of Monte Cristo. Okay, same lead. Oh, so okay, like you, that's a good tie. Okay, like nice. To have like a Jim Caviezel or however you say his last mm-hmm. name, like Knight. It'll be a nice double feature. That's good. That's a good pick. <laughs> I was going to suggest this is the end, but I feel like we've done I that was so just, many times. I was just about to say that. I was like, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. <laughs> I feel like we suggest that one all the time. And I'd be remiss, we... too, if I didn't mention the one Priscilla mentioned we should do as a pick-me-up movie alternative. Oh, no. Sister Act. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, it's a pretty good okay. pick. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, last but not least, and I feel like I know the answer to this already, uh, let's go around the table. Do you recommend this movie? <laughs> 
Adam, no. I'm starting with you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> and you want to expound on that, or are you just going to leave it at that? Like, just flat out no. I, I mean, it, for all the reasons we've already said, but yeah. another one, they literally just make Jews look absolutely horrendous. Yeah. They make them look like money-greeting little whores. Mm-hmm. Like, Mm-hmm. It's just absolutely horrible. And then they have this manager who doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> like, he just lets his man get the shit be out of him. Yeah. And he goes, oh, guys, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mally? No. Mm-hmm. What? What? No. Okay. <laughs> um. So much fucking no. <laughs> Unless you're playing a drinking game. Yeah. Even still, no. Um, I, I can't drink through this. Here's, You know what's funny is the movie Crash from 2006 that won Best Picture, we all kind of have had our moment now to like look back and be like, that was a total disaster. Why did we do that? Why did it win Best Picture? Why did we like that movie? I feel like we're starting to come around like that. Most people are anyway on this movie because this movie did get nominated for three Oscars and people did like it when it came out. Now I think we have enough distance between it and today that like you can really see this movie just for it's not even a good movie. Like take aside it trying to tell this story of religion and everything. It's not even a good movie. Like it's got good performances. No. Cinematography is pretty good. Makeup's really good. I'll give the makeup department that. But yeah, man, it's just I, I don't recommend it. Like I said, I mean, it's it's got elements that are good, but overall it's not an enjoyable experience. And you really don't want to, Adam, I, I have to apologize. I feel like I <laughs> I made you sit through two hours of a movie of a guy being tortured directed by a guy that clearly hates the Jewish people. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. That was just awful. You were a brave soul to, to say yes to being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and next time, if you want to, if you want to come back, I'm not going to assume, but if you want to come back, we'll make sure it has nothing to do <laughs> with religion. I'd love to come back if you guys would have Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Oh, you just wait till the sequel to this movie drops. Oh, You're coming yeah. back, bro. Well, oh, I do say that. Doubt. If there is the sequel, you do have to come back for that one. <laughs> oh, uh, we are watching that movie opening weekend. Oh, yeah. And doing this that day. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, also, this has nothing to do with the passion, but also, Mally, I have to point out, Adam went and saw The Rise of Skywalker with me in theaters, having seen none of the Star Wars movies. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, it was a fun experience. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, well, Dustin didn't have anyone else to go with, and yeah. he asked me if I wanted to go, and I was like, "Sure, why not?" Yeah, I had an extra ticket, I think, right? And I was like, "Yeah, because Priscilla, your babysitter, backed out or something." Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> how I many questions did you now. have? <laughs> um. Well, Jesus, that, uh, this is it, man. We did it. This is one hundred episodes 100 movies in the can mally like this is I, we just recently passed our four year anniversary since we started the show and i feel oh, like it's wow. funny because we've only done congratulations thank you thank you i feel like it's funny because we've only done 100 episodes <laughs> well i mean we took almost an entire year off yeah. between seasons one and two <laughs> <laughs> yeah this it, that will i mean it's surprising we were able to even get things back up and running like we had a lot of obstacles in the way and like didn't have like i didn't have the proper recording equipment and you know starting a a new life out here and everything it was that that was why for anyone that was wondering that's why there was such a huge break between between season one and two and plus you were still in film school and i was just graduating so like we had a lot of on you know hopefully we'll never have a, a big break like that again but uh you know this season we still got we still have four more episodes to go um and then in the off season, whenever we wrap up season four, we're gonna have a special bonus episode uh, that we have yet to record um, for <laughs> celebrating. We we yeah. keep talking about it. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> recorded it yet, but we're going to. Uh, that is is uh, a celebration of 100 episodes. Um, so you know, hold our feet to the fire on that. That that'll be out probably sometime, maybe around Christmas. No, fuck time. that. Don't touch my don't touch my fucking feet. <laughs> um no, no. But yeah man 100 Ugh. episodes it's it's insane i don't think i've ever done anything and, this committed and we're long. just as bad as yeah. we were on episode one yeah we're not good if if <laughs> anything i think we've gotten worse at this show <laughs> certainly lazier 
Certainly. D- oh, laser. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, we're never good. I don't... Have we ever really had a good silver lining? I like, just recently started actually taking notes for this podcast. Yeah, that's amazing. We're just now closing in 100 episodes, and I just started taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. take any notes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, first of all, here we are. I just want to say <laughs> if, if you are, if you did make it this far to the episode, thank you so much. You're the reason why we, we, uh, you know, have the numbers we have in terms of plays and, uh, amount of subscribers we have. It's, it's amazing. Like, I, I don't think, Mally, you even know the numbers that we get, <laughs> but no, it's, I know nothing about this show. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is truly impressive. Like, that people would bother listening to two nobodies just talk about movies a hundred episodes in. Um, but yeah, truly thank you so much. And if you want to help us keep making another hundred episodes and beyond, uh, please subscribe wherever you are right now. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. We're there. Um, and if you would please rate, uh, leave us some feedback uh that that really helps people find us more easily um and if you want to you can follow us on social media we're on facebook twitter and instagram as well as reddit reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist there's a plethora of information about the show you can get there as well as links to uh previous episodes if you want to download them for yourself they're they're all there everything's available on our back catalog a hundred episodes i don't know if if each one's an hour that's like a couple days worth of free entertainment from us that's it. i think i think we usually hang out around an hour we got some shorter ones and some definitely some longer ones we've peaked over two hours before definitely Jeez. if you if you want to hear me dustin and one other person scream at a at a fourth person about the last jedi mm-hmm. check out the finale episode of season two yeah. it's like two and a half hours long it's of super us long bitching about that movie <laughs> Um, and as of this recording, we still haven't landed on a finale for this season either, which we've been talking about some, but I don't think anything's been nailed down yet. So yeah, because you're a little bitch about it. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Well, what are the options? Well, I don't think Mally in the hundred episodes we've done, Mally's ever called me a little bitch. So that's a new one. Um, (laughs) as as far as, well, as far as options, we don't want to, we don't want to spill, spill the beans just yet about what potentially could be there. Adam, okay. we can talk about it off mic for sure, but because uh, we don't want people to know what we got, what we got in the chamber. Because uh, I know I get it. Yeah, yeah. I I believe me. Know if you like, when the like finale drops, thing. you'll know if it's one I picked. Yeah, that's a good point. Because <laughs> if it's one of Dustin's picks, I'll bitch about it for an hour. Even though technically Mally picked the last two f- season finales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they were good, weren't they? They were good episodes. I'll, I'll give it bitch. to you. Bitch. Jesus, <laughs> this, is, this is what we're doing now in the triple digits. Mally's just getting really hostile. I thought he was hostile enough in the first 99, but no, he's taking it to a new level now. <laughs> um, yeah, well, here we are, triple, 93 episodes digits. later, and I still give you shit for that time you defended a pedophile. So That's not what happened. But anyways, Adam, you were saying? That's exactly what <laughs> happened. Episode 7, Hard Candy, check it out. That's, <laughs> it's out of context. But Adam, what were you saying about triple digits? <laughs> Oh, it's 111 where I'm at. Oh my god. That's a good point. I, I wrote that down too. Wait, we have 111 episodes where you're at? You're in the future. <laughs> it's Damn right I am. You, uh, Adam, Adam and what I do both... we do for the finale? <laughs> <laughs> Adam and I are both in the in the the LA Valley and it's right where I'm at. It's 115 degrees right now. <laughs> These swords and sandal movies where everything always seems so hot and just so dehydrated and everything we picked this movie to watch and last night when we were watching it it was like over 100 degrees and I was okay like, Why the fuck? i'm gonna say something <laughs> yes it's it's 110 115 where you guys are at it's like 98 here mm-hmm. but you got but the humidity. it's also we got that humidity yeah that yeah, georgia that's, humidity uh, is complaining awful. yeah i'm so happy i don't got any like, of that humidity there. yeah I'm in my apartment it feels great but the second i step outside oh I'm god sweating. it's 30 yeah. degree 40 degree difference when you open like the front door. not <laughs> Yeah. Not last time I was in LA, but I think the time before that, uh, it was it. I hung out with you, Dustin. It was when I was out there for July Fourth one year. And you it, were was like <laughs> it was like hundred and ten. It was like a hundred degrees outside. I stay on brand: black t-shirt, black <laughs> jeans. Yeah, I will give it to you. Uh, he, but he, honestly, he definitely did that. I, 
that was not nearly as bad as like walking outside here because the humidity here oh, is yeah. just so no, it, it feels like you're awful. stepping into a swamp when you walk outside in Georgia. It's like walking into a warm milkshake. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, again, thank you, everyone. A hundred episodes. This is truly a milestone. I can't believe we made it this far, and we still got four more episodes to go in this season. So, Mally. Next week is your pick. I'm very excited for this movie. Uh, why don't you give us a clue for what we're talking about? You're more excited for next week than I am. I know. And it's, I'll go ahead and say it. It's not a fun movie. It's not good. It's not entertaining. I'm just excited because the guests like, we're going to have Like, literally, like, next, like, next week's, like, this is my hint for next week. It was a throwaway pick. I was like, I don't fucking know this mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. And, for like a month, Dustin's like, dude, I'm so excited for that episode. I'm so, it's going to be so much fun. It like, was a movie I had never okay, seen. Okay, I guess. It was a movie I had never seen. I watched it, and I was like, this movie is fucking hilarious, and it's not it, supposed it to be. Almost, it almost got cut from the mm-hmm, list, too, mm-hmm. because I wanted to replace it with something else. You were like, no, I already watched it. We're doing that one. And I, like, and I have two guests that are going to be on that I know are going to be a, just a absolute pleasure to talk about it with. So... That's all you that's your clue for next week is that it's That's my clue. Okay. It's that it's a it's a movie. It's 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 a movie. It is a movie. I will say it's got um, I'll give a clue too. It stars a lead actor that you would not expect would star in a movie like this. That's actually yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. So uh I guess thank you until uh next week when we're talking bad movies with g- good actors, I guess, right? I Sure. Uh, <laughs> thank you again, Adam, for being on the show. Whatever. And enduring this torturous experience. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but yeah, see you guys next week. And uh, as always, Excelsior. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing to end this with, especially this fucking movie. That's the perfect <laughs> thing to end it on. Excelsior. 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 Excelsior! Look at us!